All right, so here we go with our last piece in sections 8, 5, and 8, 6 on quadrilaterals. And we're going to take a look at kites and different ways to identify special quadrilaterals because we're going to take a look at a family tree for the quadrilaterals. Now, I've got to talk about kites. If you are ever in the Washington, D.C. area, you've got to go to the Kite Festival. It's pretty cool. It's usually the end of March or beginning of April, but the Smithsonian every year they put on a huge kite festival. People from all over the world come around and check this out. So if you're in DC at that time, definitely go there. You'll see all sorts of things on the mall. You'll see box kites, you'll see stunt kites, you'll even see some really kooky ones where you'll get people flying around, you get superhero kites, you get all sorts of different types of things. So if you're in that area, definitely check it out. It'd be worth it. But I digress. Let us get on and talk about the characteristics of the kite. All right, so we've got our kite. Now, kite is just a quadrilateral that has two pairs of consecutive congruent sides, but the opposite sides are not congruent. So if I label a kite like this, A, B, C, D, in that order, the opposite sides are going to be the ones that are not congruent. Consecutive sides are going to be congruent. And this just kind of makes sense. Now we're going to take a look at two characteristics of the kite. And actually there's going to be kind of three. But what I want to first do is call your attention to angle B and angle D. They're going to be given a special name called vertex angles. B and D, these guys are your vertex angles. A and C are your non-vertex angles. So more on that in a little bit. Now there's going to be two characteristics we're going to take a look at regarding the diagonals. One of them is that they are perpendicular. So when we have our picture and we basically draw a line from the vertex that connects the vertex angles and the non-vertex angles, those diagonals are going to be perpendicular. But they also do something else. The diagonals, they bisect the opposite angles. So that means this angle and this angle are going to be the same, and so is this angle here and this angle right here. Now likewise, this angle here and this angle here, wow, I got a lot of lines going on now. All of these, because remember your um, these angles here, they're going to be congruent as well. So diagonals are not only perpendicular, but they also bisect opposite angles. So that's two things that the diagonals do. One, they're perpendicular, and two, they bisect opposite angles. Now with that, exactly one pair of opposite angles are congruent, and they're going to be the non-vertex angles. B and D are your vertex angles, A and C are your non-vertex angles, and they're the ones that are congruent. Now a lot of times you'll be given a problem like this. It says find the measure of angle D in the kite shown at the right. Well, what general shape is a kite? Yeah, if you said quadrilateral, booyah, give yourself a pat on the back. So we've got our quadrilateral here, and we know that all the angles in a quadrilateral have to add up to how many degrees? Yeah, you know that. So I bet you you could write your own equation and solve for x in this problem. And not only that, I bet you could even figure out the measure of angle d. So I want you to go ahead and do that right now. Go ahead and write an equation, solve for x, and then find the measure of angle d. Now remember, angles d and f are the same, so you've got to write an equation, you'll have 2x plus 80 plus 124 equals to 360 because all the angles on the quadrilateral on the inside, they all add up to 360. Simplify everything by combining like terms on the left side, you get 2x plus 204 equals 360. After you do your algebra and arithmetic, you come up with a value of 78 for x. Now, don't forget, answer the question. Measure of angle D equals 78. Now this isn't the only way to solve this problem. You could have solved it another way. One of my kids from a few years ago, her name was Logan. She was awesome. She was a rock star, just like a lot of you guys. She solved it this way. She knew that all of the angles on the inside added up to 360. She knew she had two angles of 124 and 80. So she just subtracted that and then divided that sum by 2. 
and then came up with a measure of angle D. So I liked, I gave her credit on that. I was like, oh, we'll, we'll name this theorem after you. That was Logan's theorem. So you could have done it that way as well. So either way, you got a couple options on how you want to set that up. Now that's it on the kites. That's all we're going to talk about in this section. But we're going to go ahead and take a look at what I call the quadrilateral family tree. Now when we take a look at the family tree for quadrilaterals, It'll look something like on the left, but sometimes will be represented as a Venn diagram, which is on the right. Now I'm going to go ahead and blow each one of these up so that you can kind of see that a little bit better. And then we'll come back to always, sometimes, or never. So here is the quadrilateral family tree. Now sometimes another way to represent this is using a Venn diagram. Here's a very popular Venn diagram that you'll see in some textbooks. And this is what it would look like that describes the relationships between the different types of quadrilaterals. Now when we take a look at always, sometimes, or never, what I want you to do is kind of take a look at where things are in the family tree. Or if you're more visual and like the Venn diagram, you can take a look at it that way. Is a square a rectangle? Well, a square is going to start here and move upwards towards where the rectangle is. Or a square will start here in this peak part of the Venn diagram and move outwards to where the rectangle is. A square always has all the characteristics of the rectangle. So anytime you have a square, you know that figure could also be a rectangle. Now going the other way is a rectangle a square. So now I want to go from here downwards or from this piece into the square. Well that's sometimes the case. Sometimes a rectangle will be a square and that's only if certain characteristics that distinguish the two are prevalent in both. Now for the next one, is a trapezoid an isosceles trapezoid? For that, you can kind of see, is a trapezoid an isosceles trapezoid? So we're going down again. So we have a trapezoid that's going to go into the isosceles trapezoid. In the isosceles trapezoid, that's a real special type of trapezoid, so sometimes that's the case. And a, a trapezoid could be an isosceles trapezoid. Now for the last one, number four, is a rectangle a kite? Well, you can clearly see that a rectangle's right here, and the kite is all the way over there. They're not connected at all in the family tree. So that's one of the things that you can kind of take a look at. So rectangle will never be a kite ever 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 so that's it for this piece some of you will want to summarize this in your own words to kind of help make sense of it whether you look at it from the family tree perspective or the Venn diagram perspective but all this stuff pretty straightforward all right with a little bit of practice you'll get all these characteristics down and be able to identify quadrilaterals as a very specific type of quadrilateral so that's it for this video you guys have a great day and I'll catch up with you later Peace out.